कथम ते विदिमारोहती अत्य निर्जगद्योम यथा ते बुद्धिमाश्रित तथा सन्नीराकाशम कुत नाश्रयते मति निर्जगद्योम दृष्ट प्रकाशतमसी विना क्वृष्ट किंच ते पक्षे न प्रत्यक्ष विलु न डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ डिस्कशन इज टेकन ऑफ यर वेर द आर्ग्यूमेंट इज ओके यू से दैट द अर्थ एक्सेट्रा दिस फोर एलिमेंट्स आर अनित्य परमाणुवंत नाशत दिस फोर एलिमेंट्स आर परसेप्टेबल the earth water fire and air these four elements are perceptible and we can see that they are subject to change and therefore they are subject to creation therefore they are also subject to dissolution and so all of them will ultimately reduce to what we call parmana and so we accept that these four perceptible elements air fire water and earth are anitya they are perishable but space is not perceptible and therefore space or akash element is taken to be nitya as imperishable uncreated and imperishable by the niyayakas like if sign is so far is to take the space and time were taken to be changeless up to the newtonian physics only recently now in this century only when the theory of relativity came that they discovered that even time and space are also relative meaning that they also change so they talk of changing space and things like that <coughs> so the yaikas are are also like that they say that time and space are constant they don't they don't get destroyed so how do you say that uh, only sat is nityam only brahman is nityam this akash also is nityam 
In that case, there is duality. So he is asking us, how did you come, come to know that Akasha is Anitya or perishable? How did you come to know? How did you determine or ascertain the asatpam or unreality of Akasha? We can understand how you ascertain the unreality of other four elements because those four elements are subject to being reduced to Paramanas. But Akasha, which is not subject to reduced to anything, how did you arrive at the asatvam or unreality of Akasha? Then we ask him, how did you arrive at the reality of Akasha? How did you arrive at this, your conclusion that Akasha or space is in fact Nitya or, or indestructible? How did you arrive at that? Atyantam nirjagadvyama yathate buddhimashritam In whichever way you have come to this knowledge, that space or akasha persists even when the rest of the creation is reduced, you know, meaning the rest of the creation is not, and akasha is, in whichever way you came to know this. In that way we have come to know that such is even when akasha is not. <laughs> so you say that akasha is nitya, okay, in which nir, nir jagat vyoma, atyantam nir jagat vyoma. Nir jagat means Jagan Matra Rahitam that you know that Akasha is in whichever way you came to know that space persists even when the rest of the creation is not in that manner we came to know we come to understand that Sat or existence or Brahman persists even when Akasha is not <coughs> so why not if you can ascertain the Nityatvam or imperishability of Akasha in absence of everything we can similarly also ascertain that the Sat which is imperishable in absence of even Akasha. But he says, Nir Jagat Vyoma Drushtam Che. But he says, no, space, even when the rest of the creation is not, is Drushtam, is something that is known. He says, we know the Nityatvam or we know the reality or indestructibility of space. We ask him, how do you know? Near Jagat, when the rest of the creation is not, when before the creation, what is there? There is neither tamas nor tejaha. There is neither light nor darkness. There is nothing before the creation. And so in absence of light and darkness, how did you come to know Akasha? How did you perceive this? Or how did you come to know the space as present when nothing else is present? Because in order to perceive something, you require light in order to perceive the outside objects or darkness to perceive objects that are only seen in darkness like ghost etc. But none of these is present before the creation and therefore how did you arrive at this existence of space in absence of rest of the creation? Kvadrushtam, <coughs> where did you see it? Kinchate pakshe na pratyaksham viyat khalu and again the Nayaika say that Akasha or space is not perceptible. They only infer the space, meaning that they accept the element space alright, but it is accepted by way of inference because we experience what we call the quality called sound and that sound cannot be assigned to any of the rest of the elements and therefore since every guna must have an ashraya, must have a locus and therefore that is, the Akasha is accepted to be the locus of the quality sound and that is how they accept Akasha as something that inferred, not something that is perceived. So you say that Akasha cannot be perceived and then you say that we see Akasha in absence of everything, these are contradictory. So there are two problems. Number one, when everything else is absent, there is no means of knowledge to perceive anything, number one. And two, according to you, Akasha is not perceptible. And so these two doshas are there in your statement that Akasha is Nityam or it is real. Mm -hmm. This far we discussed yesterday. Now he has to say, Nanu darshan abhavaha sad vastuni api samanaha. So you are dismissing, he says you are dismissing the existence of space as something that persists when everything else is not there. Because Akasha cannot be perceived, alright, you cannot perceive Sat or Brahman also. 
Even Brahman also is not an object of perception. It cannot be comprehended by the mind. Then how do you say that even Sat or Brahman is? So if you say Akasha is not, okay, then how do you say Nanu Darshan Abhavaha Sat Vastuniyapi Samanaha Darshan Abhavaha The inability to perceive so that it cannot be perceived or objectified is Sat Vastuniyapi Samanaha that equally applies to Sat Vastu or Brahman because Brahman also you don't accept as an object of perception. It cannot be objectified by the sense organs of the mind. Iti Asankya, this is his question. Our answer is Sataha Sarvanubho Siddhatvat Maevam. He says Sat or existence is something that is a experienced by everyone. It's something that is experienced by everyone at all the time. And therefore, there can be no question about Sat or existence being there. <coughs> And that is what is being said in the verse 44. <coughs> Sadvastu Shuddham Tvasmabhi Nishchitai Ranubhuyate Tushnim Sthitau Nashunyatvam Shunya Buddhescha Varjana Sadvastu Shuddhantu Asmabhi Nishchirehi Anubhuyate Tushnim Sthitao It says Shuddham Sadvastu We say that Sadvastu Vastu means the truth or the, the reality Sadvastu means the truth that is Sat or existence or Brahman Asmabhi by us Nishchirehi definitely Anubhuyate is experienced or known. We say that we definitely know the sadvastu. When tushnim sthitau, when the mind becomes silent. Tushnim means silence. So tushnim sthitau, when there obtains a state of silence of the mind, at that time the sadvastu or this existence of Brahman is definitely known by us or experienced by us. So when the mind becomes silent, you cannot experience space because space is something that is an object. And so mind is the only instrument that we have to gain the knowledge of the object. However, Sat is not object. And therefore we do not require mind in order to know Sat. This is the main difference here. That when they are talking of Vyat or Akasha as being Nitya, in order for you to perceive Akasha, you must have some means of knowledge because Akasha is different from the perceiver. That everybody accepts. Atma is one, Akasha is an element which is different from Atma or the subject and therefore if you want to know something other than the subject there must be a means of knowledge. Either you must have organ of perception or you must have mind or something by which you can know that. Before the creation neither the sense perception is there nor the mind is there and therefore there is no instrument of knowledge to know something that is objective. However, Sat does not fall in that category. Sat is not an object. It is the very nature of the subject and therefore we do not require sense perception or the mind in order to know Sat. So, Tushnim Sitao, when the mind is silent, at that time, since Sat is my very nature, is the very nature of the subject, it is that which shines even when nothing else shines. The idea is that it is not that Sat shines only when the mind becomes silent. Sat shines because it is self-fulfilled and all right. But then it can be known as it is without any kind of a error, without any scope of the error when the mind is completely silent. Just as the actor can be known without any scope of the error when you remove all the costume. As in the green room, he can be known as he is. And once you know him, then even if he assumes different costumes, then also you can spot it. And similarly, the sadvastu is what remains, shines, even when the mind becomes totally silent. And therefore, when the mind is silent, this is what we call samadhi, meaning the mind has totally become silent. Even the subject-object duality also has become resolved. 
Namely, the seer and the seen, that duality also doesn't remain because both of them are also projections of the mind. Tushrim sitav, in the state of Tushrim bhavaha, or the sense silence of the mind. Suddham sadvastu. Sadvastu, which is Suddham, meaning that which is free from any kind of a projection. I mean, right now also, Sadvastu is being experienced by us. We do experience the Sadvastu or Brahman or the Self because it is self-revealing, it is self-evident. But not Shuddha. Constantly, some or the other projection constantly goes on. And when the mind is functioning and when the mind is not enlightened, then naturally the mind projects some kind of a notion upon Self. Namely, Karta, Bhokta, Sukhi, Dukhi, this sense of individuality is naturally superimposed by the mind upon the self. That's why we are talking about Tushrim Bhavaha or silence of the mind. However, if the mind is enlightened, then it doesn't project in that case, the Sat Vastu is known even when the mind is because Sat is self-revealing. <laughs> However, in order to know what we call Suddha Vastu, it is necessary that the projecting mind must become silent, that it no more projects upon the self, the kartrutva, bhuktrutva, the ahankara, that projecting faculty when it becomes silent, then shuddham sadvastu, sadvastu the atma, that is shuddha, free from any kind of a projection, it is anubhuyate, is we something that we definitely know, asmabhi nishchitehi anubhuyate, we definitely and without any doubt, know that. <coughs> and so, Sadvastu does not fall in the same category as Akasha. Akasha being different from me requires a means of knowledge such as mind. But Sadvastu being my very nature doesn't require mind. And so when the mind is silent, then also I clearly know Sat. <coughs> then he asked the question, Nanu, Tushrim bhave shunyam eva. He says, well, when the mind becomes totally silent, we say that there is only shunyam or there is nothingness. And this is a problem. This is a problem of the one who is always trying to see something. And he finds that when the mind has become completely silent, there is nothing there. There is void. There is nothing in as much as there is nothing to be experienced. Because the very faculty by which we experience namely mind, that mind itself has become quiet. There's nothing to experience. If you're seeking to see something or experience something, well, the very experiencing faculty itself has become quiet. And then one would conclude that there is only shunyam. As in deep sleep. So in deep sleep also, there is no specific experience at all. Not because there is nothing to experience, but the faculty with which you experience in your mind itself is totally quiet. And therefore, there is nothing to experience. Of course, you see the absence of everything, but there the conclusion is there is shunyam or there is only nothingness in deep sleep because had there been something, you would have experienced it. You don't experience anything, therefore there is void or shunyam in, in deep sleep. This is what they said. By the same token, they said, Nanu, tu shrim bhave shunyam eva. When the mind becomes totally silent, we say that there is only shunyam. Itarasya kasyabi pratidi abhava. Because itarasya of something other than you, kasyabi, there is nothing other than you which can be perceived. Because the very perceiving faculty mind not being there, you cannot perceive anything else. And therefore, we say that the Pura Pakshisa Shunyavadi says, in when the mind is not functioning, there is what we call void shunyam. <coughs> Then the answer is, iti ashankya shunya syapi pratidi abhava. He says, but do you perceive shunya? Because if shunyam is something that you perceive, then you can say that there is shunyam in absence of mind. For you to say what exists in absence of mind, or for you to arrive at anything, you must perceive it or you must visualize it. When the mind is not there, how do you say shunyam is? Because to determine shunyam also, you require if you are not shunyam. If shunyam is something to be known, then you will require some means of knowledge to ascertain shunyam also. And so if you say that nothing whatever can be experienced in absence of mind, 
we say that shunyam also cannot be experienced in absence of mind and therefore you cannot establish shunya also just as you cannot establish akasha being present when everything else is absent you cannot establish shunya also because shunya also cannot be objectified it cannot be objectified so shunya syabi pratidi abhavat since shunya also there is no pratidi there is no perception of shunya also shunyatva api na sambhavati therefore we say that shunyatvam na sambhavati even the wideness or non existence also is not possible because non existence also cannot be perceived non existence cannot be visualized you cannot visualize non existence you cannot perceive non existence can you become non existent you cannot become non existent also so non existence means either it can be object or it can be subject if non existence or shunyam is an object then you cannot perceive it because by a very definition it is non existent and therefore cannot become an object of your knowledge and therefore you cannot say that shunyam is because you are not known all right then maybe shunyam is a very su- nature of the subject then you become non existent do you when the mind is not there would you say that you are non existent or when you come out of your samadhi and say that i perceived non existence or i knew non existence all right the one who knew the non existence was very much there and therefore non existence as such can never be ascertained so these are practical problems it is one thing to project philosophically some something like shunyam everything is void everything goes in oblivion how do you say that have you seen oblivion he imagines oblivion but when he imagines oblivion there is a picture for oblivion also because unless you picture is something you cannot come to anything and therefore this doesn't become a mind doesn't become pramanam for the truth for the simple reason that what you call truth even if it is asat cannot be in fact but conceived of the mind at all because mind itself should not be there for you to arrive at shunyam mind itself should not be there and when the mind is not there how can you say that shunya is because that's only means you have to ascertain anything you cannot ascertain sat well that is why we depend upon shruti that's why asmabhi nischitaihi we are very confident that sat is because we are not arrived at it by logic or anything as far as we are concerned shruti or the veda or the pramanam they say that sadayo somi idam agrasi that when nothing else is sat very much is and therefore we accept sat as present and therefore we are able to know it because we know that sat is even when the mind is not and therefore we do not carry out any mental activity in order to know sat as long as you carry out mental activity then of course you are projecting something or the other upon sat and therefore we don't have any problem with the help of the shruti and the shravanam we are able to ascertain sat or existence is the very nature of myself in the absence of mind and particularly in absence of mind because then shuddham sadvastu we 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 apprehend the sat without any kind of projection at all mashunyam on the other hand cannot be established because you are not shunyam because you very much are even after your when the mind comes back you are very much there and after samadhi nobody says that i was absent for 15 minutes you say that i was silent for 15 minutes what do you say i was asleep for 15 minutes or i was silent for 15 minutes etavandam kalam aham samahito asam for this length of time i was samahita i was totally silent asam asam is i was that was it shows what is past tense of to be means being is there and therefore even the recollection that we have or the memory that we have after the silence of the mind is what i was silent and so that establishes in fact the existence of i something it doesn't establish total non existence on the other hand it establishes very much the existence of the subject and so you cannot arrive at shunyatvam in any way <coughs> just as you cannot arrive akash of course you cannot arrive at shunyatvam <coughs> now yes still this question is not resolved you said tushnim sthitav 
You say that the mind, the mind is silent, that we know the Shuddha Vastu. He says, Nanu Tarhi Sat Buddhi Abhavat Sattva Bhi Na Ghatate. If you say that Asat or non-existence cannot become the object of your knowledge, and therefore you don't accept Shunyam, because Shunyam cannot become the object of your knowledge, we say that even Sat also cannot become the object of your knowledge. Puru Pakshi said, Nanu Tarhi Sat Buddhi Abhavat even Sat or existence also cannot become the object of Buddhi, meaning it cannot be objectified by Buddhi. Sattva vi mana ghatade, and therefore, if you don't accept Shunyam by the same token, you cannot accept Sat also. Because if Shunya cannot become the object of knowledge of the mind, Sat also cannot become the object of knowledge of mind. So Sat buddhi, like ghata buddhi, pata buddhi. When ghata becomes the object of knowledge, then there is what we call ghata buddhi or a ghata kara vritti. When another object such as pata becomes an object of my knowledge, that is what we call pata kara vritti. Like that there cannot be shunya kara vritti because vritti itself is not there when shunyam is there. Okay, if shunyam cannot become the object of vritti, sat also by the same token cannot become the object of vritti, then we would say that sat also is not there. You dismiss Shunyam because Shunyam cannot become the object of knowledge of mind. We dismiss Sat also because Sat also cannot become the object of knowledge of the mind. Because mind cannot objectify Sat or existence also cannot objectify the Self. It is Shankate. This is the Shanka here in the verse 45. Sat buddhirapi chen nasti Mastvasya Svaprabhatvataha Nirmanas Katva Sakshitva Sanmatram Sugamam Dranam Sad Buddhi Habi Chet Nasti Nasti Chet If you say, if you Purupakshi, if you say that Sat buddhi api nasti chet. That sat buddhi also is not there, meaning that sat also does not become the object of buddhi. If this is what you have to say, doesn't matter. Mastu, we don't mind. We don't need that sat should become the object of buddhi. Mastu, let it be so. Let sat or existence or atma not become the object of buddhi, meaning that if you say that since sat cannot be objectified, fine. Let sat not be objectified. Let the subject not be objectified. Mastu. Asya so prabhatvataha nirmanas katva sakshitva san matram sugam dhunam. <coughs> Says the tika, tasya so prakashatva na tad buddhi abhava anishtahai di pariharati. Because what is sat? So prakasham. See, when do you require buddhi? Or when do you require a particular thought? For example, there is an object called a pot. When would you know this pot? Only when this, a thought form of the form of pot takes place. So, ghatā is known when ghatā kāravṛtti takes place. Why is it necessary that ghatā kāravṛtti be there? Because ghatā is not self-revealing. Ghatā requires a vritti or a thought to reveal it and then alone ghatā can be known. And so vritti or buddhi is required for all those objects which are not self-revealing. All those objects which require, which depend upon the mind to reveal themselves, for that you require buddhi. But sat does not fall in that category. Sat is not like a ghatā or a patā, which is jadam, paraprakāsyam, requiring something else to illumine that. Then what is the nature of Sat? He says Svaprabhatvataha. Svaprabhatvataha means Svaprakashatvat. Since Sat is Prabha, Prabha also means Prakasham. Sat also is Svaprakasham. Svat is Svaprakasham. Self-effulgent, self-revealing, self-evident. And therefore, it does not require mind to reveal itself. Thought is not self-evident and therefore Mind is required to reveal the part. However, Sat is not like that. Sat is self-evident and therefore you do not require mind 
to reveal Sat. In fact, that which reveals the mind is Sat. So, Sat does not require anything else to reveal itself. It is self-revealing or self-evident. Therefore, Sat is of a category altogether different from Ghata, Pata or Akasha or Sunya or anything. <coughs> so, he says, Natat buddhya bhava anishtaha tasya svaprakashatvat Since sat is svaprakasham, self-effulgent or self-evident, tat buddhya bhava na anishtaha Absence of sat buddhi or absence of a particular thought which is sat as an object, if the such a thought is not there, na anishtaha We do not think that there is anything wrong. Because we do not require buddhi in order to reveal sat. Sat reveals itself. Edi pariharti maastu. If sat buddhi is not there, let it not be. Asya svaprabhatvataha. So that taha is the fifth case. Asya svaprakasatvat. Since sat is svaprakasam, therefore if the sat buddhi is not there, let it not be. <coughs> then you ask the question, svagochar buddhiya bhave. Katham sadvastu avagantum shakyate. Alright. If svabuddhi, svagochar buddhi abhave. A given thing, anything can be established only when it is known. Any object can be established or presence of any object can be established when that object is known. For example, how do we say that this glass is? Only when the glass becomes the object of my knowledge. Otherwise, only glass becomes the object of my knowledge, awareness. Then only you say, glass is. Meaning that a, an object like glass requires some pramana to establish its existence. Every object in the world is like that. It requires some pramana. In case of glass, it requires eyes by which it can be seen and it requires mind. Along with the eyes, to establish the presence of glass. So any object other than me is that which requires me or requires my mind to establish its existence. So here question is, anything can be established only when it becomes the object of knowledge. Until then the thing is not established. Some galaxies and things like that may be there, who knows? But as long as they do not become the object of your knowledge, as long as you cannot objectify them so long, you don't know that such galaxies are. No, no, just because you cannot see, you can't say that they are not there. They must be there. All right, that way it is known. You see, things that you cannot objectify are known as not yet objectified, but that way they are known, understand? Some concept is still form in your mind, so every galaxy is beyond the range of uh, sight, must be there. But anything can be established only when it becomes the object of knowledge. Either through perception or directly by the mind. Otherwise, so svagochar buddhi is required. A ghatakar ghatagochar buddhi. For ghata to be established, ghatagochar buddhi. Buddhi or the thought that objectifies ghata is required. So, gochar means vishaya. So, ghata vishaya buddhi is required. Pata vishaya buddhi is required. Any buddhi here means a thought form, vritti. So, ghatakara vritti, patakara vritti, that is required in order to establish the existence of ghata, pata, etc. If you say that sat cannot become the object of the buddhi, then sva gochara buddhi abhave, buddhi that can objectify sva or that sat, katham sad vastu avagantum shakyada, sva means sat, sad vastu, sad vastu gochara buddhi abhave, Katham sadvastu avagantum shakyade. Then how do you come to know the sadvastu? If sadvastu cannot become the object of buddhi, meaning buddhi cannot encompass sadvastu, then how do you come to know the sadvastu? Ityataha aha. Nirmanaskatva sakshitvat sanmatram sugamam nunam. He says nirmanaskatva sakshitvat. What is sadvastu? What you call sad also is chit. Sat is Svayam Prakasham, self-effulgent. It being self-effulgent, therefore it is also Chit. Right in the first chapter, this was established. We would have said, the objects of knowledge keep on changing, 
but the summit of the knowledge awareness associated with different objects remains changeless and therefore that summit is changeless or sat so summit or knowledge or awareness is sat or existence so existence self is self revealing meaning that existence itself is sat so what is this sat nirmanaskatva sakshitva even when the mind is not meaning when all the meditations or all the uh, activity of the mind have become completely silent then also sakshitva the sat is the sakshi sat is the very awareness which is sakshi of the mind as well as absence of the mind sakshi is it completely illumines as in the 10th chapter and we say when the same author gives a very beautiful illustration with awareness is compared to a light in the theater which swami must have mentioned the theater lamp how the theater lamp illumines everything on the stage the dancer is there and the accompaniment is there that yajima the master for whom the dance is performed is there all the spectators are there all this is illumined by the lamp the nartaki the dancer undergoes variety of motions and different expressions come on her face and sympathetic expressions also appear on the face of the audience so all these changes are also illumined by the lamp itself remains what changeless so it, it illumines the presence of all of these the changes taking place in all of them itself remaining changeless and when the whole performance is over when the dancers goes away and everybody also departs from there the whole theater and the stage is empty and then also the same lamp continues to illumine the empty theater also so the lamp illumines the presence of the nartaki as well as the absence of her when nartaki or dancer is compared to the mind so also what we call sat or the awareness illumines all the different motions of the mind as well as the absence of the mind because that never goes to sleep sat never goes to sleep. if it goes to sleep it becomes anityam so it never goes to sleep it continues to illumine and so nirmanaskatva sakshitva it means a sakshi on the witness of that absence of mind or when the mind is completely silent san matram sugamam nanam and that is how sat is to be known not that i am going to visualize sat or not that i am going to objectify sat and that is why i am going to come to know how am i going to come to know so this to be known as a very sakshi the witness of the mind as a very subject the sub is going to be known as the very subject as a very witness of the presence as well as absence of the mind in that way sugamam nunam nunam for the man sugamam sushtugamyam it is easy to be known the sub which is self revealing is easy to be known as a witness of the absence of the mind also not as a thought form not as the object of the mind but as the witness of the mind so ghata pata etc known as what objects of the mind while sat is to be known as the witness of the mind <coughs> and since the witness continues to be even when the mind is not and that is how it is easy to know that sat if that witness also goes away when the mind goes away well you would never know but it is self effulgent self revealing self existent exists on its own in, own in its own glory and therefore it is known and it is to be known as such so it is easy to know evam nish prapanchasya sakshinah tushnim sadau bhanam pradarshya in this manner nish prapanchasya sakshinah what is sat the sakshi the witness himself is what nishprapanchasya he is himself what nishprapancha nishprapancha means devoid of prapancha devoid of the duality prapancha means creation one who is himself or the sakshi is totally free from creation or devoid of creation unaffected by creation untouched by creation tushnim sitau bhanam pradarshya we say that the tushnim sato when the mind has become completely silent then there is knowledge of the sat vastu shuddham sat vastu asmabhi anubhavate the shuddha sat vastu 
is there as a very silent, as a very witness of even the silent mind. Siddhau bhanam pradasya. So it's shown how sadvastu is and how sadvastu. You have to establish how to know a thing. If you cannot establish the way of knowing, then that thing is not established at all. And so you have to establish also how to know the thing. First of all, we say that Sat is real because Shruti says. And it is real, therefore it ever is. And it is self-effulgent, and therefore it ever shines. It continues to shine whether the mind is there or not. And it is best known when the mind has become silent because then the mind is not projecting any duality, not projecting any complexes upon itself. And so Shuddha Sadvastu can be known when the projecting mind is silent. Fine. In this manner, Sat has been presented here as the very witness of the mind and the absence of the mind. Tushanim Sadau Bhanam Pradashya Etad Drashtan Dabalena Srustehe Purabi Sadvastu Tatha Avagandum Shakyate Etad Drashtan Dabalena Now this becomes Drashtan. Drashtan means illustration. Illustration is that which is acceptable to both the parties. When there are contenders, the contenders, whenever you want to prove a point, you have to give an illustration to prove a point. Where what you want to say can be seen, can be evident. And that illustration is something that should be acceptable to both the parties. So now we have already established to his conviction also that Sadvastu is that which is a witness of the silent mind and is known, is to be known as such. So then it becomes drashtanda, it's something that is now established. What is sad? The, the witness. When? Even when the mind is not. Etat drashtanda valena sruste puravi. See, absence of the mind is very similar to the state that exists when the creation is not there. Even before the creation also, what is the obtaining state? Same state that obtains when the mind is not. Because mind is creation. So, mind itself is creation. And when are you aware of creation? When are you aware of the world? Only when the mind is functioning. In deep sleep, when the mind is not functioning, you are not aware of the world. So, awareness of the world is only when the mind is functioning. When the mind is not functioning, the world also is not there. And therefore, the state that obtains when the mind is absent, is a state that obtains when the creation is not there. And so, this particular analysis of how Sat is a witness even when the mind is absent serves to show how when the creation is not there, then also Sat is. Sat is what? Nityam, because when nothing else is there, then also it is. Etat drishtand balena srustehe purapi, even before the creation also, Sadvastu tatha avagantum shakyate. The sadvastu, this truth that is sad, in, can be also known in the same manner as it is known in when the mind has become silent. Ityaha. Ahitye. Yatha sakshi nirakula. Maya jrum bhanatah purvam Satthaiva nirakulam Mano jrum bhanarahitye Jrum bhanam means yawning When you open your mouth, that's called jrum bhanam, yawning Meaning that which is closed becomes open, that is called jrum bhanam that's called vistara or projection. So that's also called creation. So mano jrumbhanam, mano jrumbhanam means when the mind opens up, meaning that when the mind is functioning, when the mind is projecting. Mano jrumbhanam rahitye, when the projections of the mind have become silent, so in a state which is free from the projecting mind, yatha sakshi nirakula hai. How the sakshi is nirakula hai? Akulata, akulata means agitation. Nirakula, unagitated. Calm, silent. So when there is absence of this projection to the mind, how the sakshi of the witness is? Unagitated, calm, silent. Maya, jrumbhanatah purvam. We say that 
Maya Jrumbhanatah Purvam even before the Jrumbhanam of Maya means projection of the Maya. So mind is the individual Upadhi and Maya is the Samashti Upadhi, the Upadhi of the total. This was introduced in the very first chapter. That how Maya is, Vishuddha Sattva Maya becomes the Upadhi of the Ishvara with which he creates. So Maya is the creative power, that will be explained. So Maya is the Upadhi or the limiting or the adjunct or the functioning, the medium through which law functions and mind is upadhi of the individual. But when the sense of individuality is given up, the sense of totality also gets given up because totality, samasti, stands only with reference to vyasti, the individuality. As long as I have that notion of individuality, so long Ishvara is something different and away from me, that thing can re- remains. When that sense of individuality is given up, well, that Ishvara who is different from me or limitless, that also is given up. So, Maya, Jrumbhanatav Purvam, and so also this what we call Samasti Upadhi or Maya, Jrumbhanam means projection. When the projection of the Maya is not there, Sat Tasayivan Nirakulam, you would say that. The interesting thing is, what obtains in absence of mind is a chit or sakshi. The awareness obtains as the witness of the absence of mind. What obtains when the maya is not yet started is projection. When maya is silent, what obtains is sat. Except that what is chit is sat. Same thing is called sakshi with reference to the individual. Antahkarana upadi upahira chaitanyam that chaitanyam the, the, the consciousness or awareness which is associated with individual antahkarana is called sakshi and same thing when associated with the samasti upadi called maya it is called sat or brahman so says sat tathayavan nirakulam so same entity is called sakshi as witness with reference to the individual mind same thing is called sat or existence as a jagat adhisthanam and the substratum of the whole creation is called Sat Nirakulam. Nirakulam means again Nishprapancham. Sakshi is without agitation because agitations are in the mind. The Maya creates Prapancha. And so Brahman is what? Nishprapancham. Free from Prapancha. Free from projection or free from creation. So when the projection of the Maya is not there, then Sat obtains as that which is free from any Prapancha. So this becomes what? The drashtanta. Our sakshi becomes the drashtanta. This particular thing that how sat obtains a sakshi in absence of mind, that particular drashtanta is now employed to establish the state that must be there before the creation. <coughs> in this way, now the author has arrived at the concept of maya. He says it is Maya which creates a sense of duality. It is Maya that projects a duality where it is not. Just as the mind that projects the sense of duality. Who creates this concept that I am I am a karta, I am a bhokta? Who creates that? Mind creates that. Who creates a duality of the subject and object? The mind creates. Mind projects upon oneself first the idea of the subject and then creates the idea of objectivity on something other than me. And so also, it is Maya that creates this sense of duality. And so when that projecting power, Maya, is not there, duality also is not there. And what we find is, Nirakulam Nishprapancham Advitiyam Sat alone. <coughs> and so Maya is what we come up with now. It is Maya that in fact creates a sense of duality. So now the subsequent discussion will be, what is the nature of Maya, etc., how you arrive at Maya. That will be discussed next. Okay, and we can take tomorrow. <coughs> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyade Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Krutau Vande Bhagavantau Punaf
पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मेटे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तेहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो